Hi everyone, hope everyone are fine. Firstly, I would like to welcome you all to our Kinesian YouTube channel. This is Lakshmi and I am here to teach Mathematics. So, today I have chosen the topic Rational Numbers. with the rational numbers let's have a look on number system so it is a type of a number system that is why we are going to start with a number system a number is a mathematical object that can be used to measure label and count the things a number is a can be used to count. Measure and label. So, students, if you understand the definition here, what is it is saying? A number is a mathematical object that can be used to cone, measure, and label. Suppose if you want to cone up things, we are going to deal with the number system and for measuring the things as well as labeling the parts of the things. So, a number system can be having a different types so here the number system which is having a different types so let's look on the types of the number system types of numbers and the first one is natural numbers so I can say all the counting numbers which are starting with 1 are said to be a natural numbers. That is 1, 2, 3 and so on up to infinity. Then the set of those numbers are said to be natural numbers. Counting numbers are called natural numbers. Here the set of numbers are represented by using a capital letter N. And the elements can be represented within a flat bracket. So which are starting with 1. 1, 2, 3 and so on up to infinity. So the set of these numbers are said to be natural numbers. And the next type is whole numbers. So I can say all the natural numbers with 0 together are said to be whole numbers. All natural numbers with zero together are called whole numbers. So, if you are going to add zero to your natural numbers, then the set of numbers are said to be what? Whole numbers. Here the whole numbers can be represented by using a capital letter W. So the elements can be represented within a flat bracket which will be having 0, 1, 2 and so on up to infinity. Then the set of these numbers are said to be whole numbers. Now 
The next one is integers. So if I am going to add negative numbers to whole numbers, then the set of those numbers are said to be what? Integers. Whole numbers and negative numbers together. Here the set of numbers can be represented by using a capital Z or capital I. So, suppose if I am going to start with a integer minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. These set of numbers are said to be what? Integers. And the next one is rational numbers. Now we enter into the actual topic that is rational numbers. The numbers which can be expressed in the form of P by Q, where P and Q are integers, in the mean way P should not be equals to Q and Q should not be equals to 0. The numbers can be expressed in the form of P by Q where P and you are integer the same how p should not be equals to q and q should not be equals to 0. Then the set of those numbers are said to be rational numbers. Here the rational numbers can be represented by using a capital Q. The set of the rational numbers can be represented by using a capital Q. So which can be in the form of 1 by 2, 3 by 4, 7 by 2, 15. So these set of numbers are said to be what? Rational numbers. So let's have a look on the properties of addition and multiplication in z. Now z is nothing but integers. I have already told that the set of integers can be represented by using a capital letter z. In the previous year, we have discussed with the properties of addition and multiplication based on natural numbers as well as whole numbers. In the same how, in this chapter we are going to discuss with the properties of addition and multiplication in integers as well as rational number. So, we were having a different types of the properties that is closure property, commutative property, associative property, distributive property, the same rules, the same properties we are going to discuss in this chapter also. So, let's take a first property that is closure property. For all integers A, B. So, here since we are dealing with integers, we, are, we have to take A and B as a integers. Both A plus B and A into B are also integers. Suppose for example A plus B. So in the place of A, I am taking the value 3. In the place of B, I am taking the value 5. So which is giving some sum. So this should be an integer. The sum of two integers should be always a integer. That is what this property says. In the same how a into b that is 3 into 5. 3 5 is a 15. Again, it should be a 
in teacher. This is what the property of closure says us. The next property is quantitative property. So here for all integers a comma b, a plus b is equals to b plus a. Whatever the origins we are getting, the same thing should be on LHS. For example, for example, suppose if I am taking 5 plus 7 should be equals to what? 7 plus 5. So what is the sum of 5 plus 5 and 7? Should be a 12. The same how? 12. So here LHS is equals to RHS which is under what? Addition. So this is this property is under addition. Since we are having plus sign A plus B is equals to B plus A that is quantitative property under addition. Under Same how, suppose if I am taking an example for a into b is equals to b into a. For example, 5 into 7 which is equals to the same value I am taking here. So in the place of a and b the same value I am taking only a, a the difference with the this one. Addition as well as multiplication functions. 7 into 5 that is 5 7 is 1. 35 should be equals to 35 obviously. So this is under multiplication. So and the next property is associative property. So for all integers a comma b comma c. So, just before we have discussed with the closure as well as quantitative property, then we were having only two integers, it is A and B. But here we are going to take three integers, can be A, B, C. So, here the property says is that is A plus of B plus C is equals to A plus B of plus C. In the same how A into B into C is equals to A into B of into C. See, that is suppose if I am going to take an example for example 2 plus 3 plus 4 2 plus of 3 plus 4 should be equals to 2 plus 3 or plus 4 so 2 plus so here 2 plus of 3 plus 4 which is equals to 2 plus 3 or plus 4. So here what is the sum here? 2 plus 7 should be equals to 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4. So 2 plus 7 is what? 9 which is equals to 5 plus 4 is 9. So LHS is equals to RHS. In the same how if you do multiplication also it should be LHS should be equals to RHS. So this is the property of associative. So here a plus of b plus c which is equal to a plus b of plus c which is under addition in the same how a into b into c which is equal to a into b of into c which is under multiplication. Now come to the next property that is distributive property. For all integers a comma b comma c a into b plus c. So here the A can be applicable for both B as well as C. Since we are going to use the bracket for B plus A, I can say A is the common factor which I have taken out of B plus C. So if I am going to multiply A to B as well as C, how I can write A into B plus A into C. Suppose 2 into 3 plus 4. So 2 into 3 plus 4. What did I say just now? So whatever the values we are having inside the bracket, that thing solved first, isn't it? 2 into 3 plus 4 is 7. So 7 is a 14. So under LHS I have solved. Let's see. Under RHS that is 2 into 2 into 3 plus 2 into 4. So 2, 3 is a 6 plus 2, 4 is a 8. So again 8 plus 6 is what? So here LHS is equal to RHS. So this is what the property of distributive set. So these are all the different properties of addition and subtraction 
in integers. In the same how we will discuss the properties with addition and subtraction which is regarding the ratio numbers also. So today we have done with an introduction class. In the next class I will start with the exercise. So till then stay safe. Stay